Hello! In this video I'm going to be sharing my approach to painting the Dragon Hybrid Varix from Fantasy Flight Games Dungeon Crawling Adventure board game, Descent Legends of the Dark. The game comes with 6 beautifully sculpted hero miniatures and 34 monsters, pre-assembled and all cast in a nice hard plastic, allowing for some dynamic poses and well defined details. Here's a quick overview of how I'll be painting my first miniature from Descent Legends of the Dark. I'm going to begin by doing a little cleaning up before priming the figure in black, followed with a quick value sketch using the airbrush. However, a plain prime in white would also be fine. I'll then be applying the base colours where I'll be varying the consistency to allow some of the details to show through for the more textured areas. We can then provide some shades to the miniature to give a quick and easy boost to the contrast and definition, and having reached a decent tabletop standard, you could actually stop here if you like. I've then chosen to have some fun with the crystals where I'll be aiming to create a kind of inner glow effect. And finally, I'll be adding some highlights that will include some pink object source lighting, and I'll also be using some non-metallic metal techniques for the staff. As usual, you'll find chapter links to the various sections in the video description below. Let's begin. I'm first removing a couple of small mould lines on the figures using a scraper or craft knife. And for any small gaps between the sub-assemblies, I'm simply brushing on some matte varnish by Vallejo. This can be applied in a couple of layers as needed. I'm now going to prime the figure in black using Badger Steinol Res Black Primer, which I'm applying with an airbrush. If you're using a rattle can primer, I'd suggest simply priming in white instead. I'm now going to spray a mid-tone grey from the direction of a rough halo above the miniature. This gives us what we might call a zenithal pattern of light and shade. I'm also brightening up the crystals along with the surrounding area as I want them to appear as if they're giving off light. And finally, I'm using some pure white, both directly from above, and once again to brighten up the crystals on the ground. This just gives me a kind of tonal map to help me visualise how I want to light the miniature with the painting, but as mentioned, just priming in plain white would also be fine. We're now ready to add some colour. I'm going to begin with the scaly areas of skin, and I'm using a roughly equal mix of scale colours Arden Green and Gobi Brown. I like to thin my paints with water mixed with a little flow enhancer, which I keep in a nearby well, and it's a good idea to use an older brush when mixing. I've thinned this down a fair bit to allow the raised parts of the texture to show through. I'm also using this for the feet. For the rest of the skin, I'm using Nakar darkened with a little black. I'm looking for a more opaque finish here, so I've thinned the paint just enough to get it to flow nicely. Here I'm just mixing in a little of the green to create a slightly more organic join on the feet between the two tones where there isn't a definite border. For the areas of white clothing, I'm using white sands mixed with varying amounts of abyssal blue. Here I'm creating a rough gradient, and I'm also adding a little black to tone down the blue. I'm 
and first applying a mid-grey tone. I've then chosen to sketch in some initial highlights on top, using a lighter tone from the gradient. For the light green sections of cloth, I'm going to lighten and desaturate some black forest green with some graphite. I'm aiming for a pretty opaque finish here, so a couple of layers might be needed. For the darker green areas, I'm simply darkening some of the black forest green with some black. I've noticed that this darker cloth also wraps around the back, so I'm now painting the two shorter flowing sections at the rear. For the various little claws and horns, I'm mixing some goby brown with a little black. I'm also using this for the belt. Next I'm painting the staff using Mars Orange, darkened and desaturated with a little black. Here I'm painting the ties on the staff with the same colour we used for the horns. For the rocky ground I'm using petroleum grey, which I'm thinning down a fair bit. Finally, I'm painting the crystals, and I'm using fuchsia mixed with a little sunset purple. With the base colours complete, we're ready to apply some shades. I'm going to first shade the scaly skin using Citadel's Athonian Camo Shade, which I'm thinning with an equal amount of Lamian Medium, just to control the concentration and darkness.
you can see how nicely this flows into the recesses, boosting the contrast and definition of the scaly texture. I'm now adding a roughly equal amount of Celia Green Shade along with some additional medium, and I'm using this to shade the green cloth. Once again, we can see how easily this collects in all of the folds and recesses, giving us a nice easy bit of shading. I'm also trying this on the horns. I'm now going to shade the white cloth using the Griff Charger Grey contrast colour, thinned with an equal amount of contrast medium. I might also add a touch of Flow Enhancer. This once again collects nicely in the recesses and also helps smooth over the highlights that we sketched in earlier. White can be a tricky colour to work with, but this approach gives us a pretty nice result without too much trouble. Finally, for what it's worth, I'm going to shade the staff using an equal mix of Agrax Earthshade and Nuln Oil. I'm also using this for the belt. Apart from shading the crystals, you could now paint the rim of the base in black, and we've already achieved a perfectly good tabletop standard. If you want to try some more advanced optional ideas, join me now as we paint the crystals. To create an interesting look for the crystals, I'm going to add some white to brighten the base of the structure, as well as some of the edges. And I'm going to add violet to darken the upper part of the flat sides. I'm then going to be brushing over some fluorescent magenta to boost the vibrancy and create a more glossy finish. I started quite tentatively by adding white to the base tone and lightening the lower part of the crystals in a couple of stages. I'm also using these lighter tones to begin defining the edges, especially for the tops of the crystals. I'm now adding violet to the base tone, and using this to darken some of the upper areas. We can use pure white for the sharpest highlights. I'm now thinning down some fluorescent magenta and brushing this over the top. This boosts the intensity of the pink and also helps blend some of the transitions and can be applied in a couple of layers. I'm now just seeing how far I can push the violet tones. And here I'm reapplying some of the white edge highlights, and I'm also adding some small glints and imperfections. I'm 
and I'm also using the fluorescent magenta to play around with the texture a little. Some pure white sands can be used if you want a little bit of warmth in the brightest glints. I'm quite happy with the direction this is going, but want a greater sense of inner glow, so I'm using some thinned white to really brighten up the roots of the crystals. And I went back and forth a little with the fluorescent magenta and the white. I'm now working round the front in much the same way. Here you can once again see me alternating between the fluorescent magenta and the pure white. It's worth noting that even with a somewhat sketchy approach like this, we can still create quite an eye-catching look. With that done, let's move on to the highlights. I'm going to start with the base, and for the large rocks, I'm simply glazing over some of the pale pink tones from the palette to begin creating the impression of a coloured glow coming from the crystals. And for the more bumpy ground, I might use something a bit more opaque to roughly pick out the raised texture. Additional layers can of course be added to increase the intensity of the pink glow. I'm now working my way up the figure, adding fuchsia and white to the original base tones to create some pink object source lighting. Here for example I've added the pink to the pale skin base colour. As well as adding pink to the base tones, we can also apply some thinned fluorescent magenta, especially for the parts of the figure that are closest or most exposed to the crystals. I'm using less pink the further we get from the crystals. I'm also now adding some pink highlights to the scaly areas of skin nearest the crystals. Because I imagine the claws to be somewhat shiny, I'm first hitting them with an opaque bit of white. And I'm then adding some fluorescent pink on top. I'm now 
now moving on to the white cloth. And here I'm adding a little of the pink to the green tones. With the pink highlights complete, I'm now going to add some general overhead highlights by simply adding varying amounts of Tenera yellow to each of the base tones. I'm starting with the green fabric. You can see I'm adding additional Tenera yellow to brighten the highlights in a couple of stages. I'm now highlighting the horns. And next I'm highlighting the upturned parts of the white cloth. I might jump around a bit, boosting the highlights of the various parts until I'm happy with the overall look. Next I'm highlighting the scales. And now the claws. I'm now picking out the teeth and the eyes using some pure nacre and then maybe some white sands.
And these are my last few highlights for now. Finally, I'm going to highlight the staff using some non-metallic metal techniques which can look quite striking. I'm going to begin by sketching out my initial highlights using the original black and orange mix but with a greater amount of the Mars orange. This also feels like a nice tone to highlight the belt with which I missed earlier. With the main pattern of highlights mapped out, I'm now going to use some Elden Dill Violet to add some depth to the shadows, and some Lilith Yellow to brighten the highlights. These colours will allow me to create some complementary contrast, and they also have a more satin finish, which I find helps create a more convincing non-metallic metal effect. So here I'm mixing in some of the violet to help boost the depth of the shadow tones. and I'm adding increasing amounts of the Lilith Yellow to brighten the highlights. In particular, I'm going to want some nice sharp edge highlights which can be easily achieved using the side of the brush. It's often a nice idea to incorporate some of the surrounding colours from elsewhere on the miniature when working on non-metallic metal effects, such as you can see here where I'm adding some of the pink tones to the underside of the staff. I'm now continuing to push the brightness of the highlights. For the brightest highlights I'm going to add some high key yellow and eventually some purity white. You could equally use something like Vallejo's Ivory. We can also create some small scratches with this. This is now pure high key yellow. And once again adding some small touches of pink into some of the mid-tones. I'm now adding some white to the high key yellow to create my brightest highlights. Here I'm also adding a hint of green. With the staff complete, I've chosen to add some careful black lining to help with the definition. I 
and here I'm approximating the pale green pattern on the belt. I'm now finishing VRX off with a few final highlights. And this completes VRX. Thank you for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed the episode. Please note you'll find a full products list in the video description, along with all of the places I can be reached on social media. Join me again soon, and happy painting.